The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. We shall be raised with him. Praise to the risen Son. Amen. Well, welcome everyone. What a beautiful thing it is to gather, even remotely and online, to share in this joyous Easter morning and celebrate the risen Lord. Jesus has conquered death, and because he lives, we can live also. Psalm 233 from the Salvation Army Psalm Book will serve as our call to worship, words drawn from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 and 55. The strife is over, the battle won, now the victor's triumph won. Now be the song of praise begun, hallelujah. The powers of death have done their worst, but Christ their legions have dispersed. Let shouts of holy joy outburst, hallelujah. The three sad days have quickly sped. He rises glorious from the dead. All glory to our risen head, hallelujah. He closed the yawning gates of hell. The bars from heaven's portals fell. Let hymns of praise his triumphs tell. Hallelujah. Lord, by the stripes which wounded thee, from death's dread sting thy servants free, that we may live and sing to thee. Hallelujah. Well, friends, he is risen. He is risen indeed. And because he lives, we can live also. God bless you, and happy Easter.
Our scripture reading is Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Well, we thank God for his glorious word. I know he's rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. He is risen. He is risen indeed. The words rang out that first Easter from one to another, and then from another to yet another, as they believed. And so through the centuries, the mystery and the majesty of Easter has cascaded to generations of believers one after another, 
echoing that declaration of faith, he is risen. And the response resounding, he is risen indeed. General Albert Osborne, in the middle of the last century, wrote the words to the song, The Well is Deep, opening with this line, Life is a journey, long is the road. A few, le- a few years later, the Beatles followed up with the song, The Long and Winding Road. Perhaps for many of us, that image of life as a journey resonates, especially when we consider the road to be long. But in these past few weeks, we would no doubt echo those words that say, life is a journey and it's a long and winding road. Paul McCartney describes the song as one he wrote at his farm in Scotland in 1968, inspired by the sight of a road leading up into the hills in the remote highlands. Based on further comments by McCartney, we understand the lyrics expressed a reflection of his own anguish at the distress in his own life, as well as the nostalgic look back upon the journey of the Beatles and what was an uncertain future emerging. It was released two years later, a month after the Beatles' breakup. Life is a journey, and the road is long, and in recent weeks we would agree it's a long and winding road. Two men walked a long and winding road that first Easter. The image of a journey punctuating throughout Luke's gospel. In its closing chapter, Luke introduces two members of the wider circle of Jesus' followers on their journey, their journey now to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They had probably been in the city for the Feast of Unleavened Bread and may well have stayed longer than they had planned as the events of the arrest and the crucifixion of their master and their Lord had unfolded. Jesus of Nazareth, arrested and crucified. Not only had they loved him as their master and their leader, they saw in him the promised Messiah, and they hoped that he would exert his authority and redeem Israel from Rome's domination. They had likely witnessed or certainly been told by friends of the triumphant entry into Jerusalem earlier that week. And then they watch the events unfold. The events unfold that will lead to the crucifixion, death, and burial of Jesus. Then came the message that morning. The message from the women saying they had been to the tomb and the tomb was empty. The understanding that angels had appeared to the women and to others. Following Jesus had become a long and winding road. Curves they never could have imagined nor could they understand. And so they made their way down the road to Emmaus. As they walked, they talked. Questions they could not answer. Confusion they could not understand. The unexplainable. They walked and they talked along the road to Emmaus. And there on the road, the long and winding road of life's journey, even the journey of a disciple, the road to Emmaus, Luke records that Jesus himself, putting the emphasis upon himself, Luke wrote, Jesus himself, not an angel with a message this time, but Jesus himself drew near to these disciples. Jesus himself came up, walked along with them. He walked with them, and he began to talk with them. Just as so often before his crucifixion, he opens with a question. Let's be reminded again that when Jesus asks a question, it's not primarily to source information, but rather it's an invitation, an invitation to step into a deep dialogue. Remember, God knew where Adam and Eve were when he asked them where they were, but he wanted them to know, and he wanted to invite them into a deep dialogue, a necessary conversation. And so here now in Luke 24, Verse 18, Luke gives us the name of one of the two who were walking the road to Emmaus, Cleopas, who was surprised when the stranger who had joined them in the journey didn't know what had happened in Jerusalem these past days. But they saw in this stranger a genuine interest, a genuine interest, and so they poured out their hearts and their anguish to him over the death of their Lord and their master. 
They poured out their confusion in light of an empty tomb discovered that morning. They shared their hope, their hope that Jesus was the Messiah, their hope that had been dashed at Calvary with his death. The struggle of hope and fear spilled from their hearts through their lips to this stranger. It's then Jesus, this stranger, still unidentified by the two on the road, called them, called them for not looking at all the prophets had said. He took them back through the scriptures, beginning with Moses, and drew for them the crimson red line that traced the journey of life, of life eternal, the long and winding road of God's redemption throughout history, leading to this very moment. All the prophets had said, included not just the promise of a Messiah, but that of a Messiah who would be a suffering servant, despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering, pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, that the punishment that brought us peace would be upon him, and by his wounds we would be healed. He traced for them the crimson line of redemption that brought them to this very moment. And as he was about to leave them, they insisted that he come and stay with them, for soon it would be dark. And there, gathered together around the table, they shared a meal. And as he broke the bread, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. They recognized him, Jesus once crucified, buried, now resurrected, sitting with them. Here the statement of St. Augustine written years later was foreshadowed as Augustine wrote, Faith is to believe what you do not see, and the reward of this faith is to see what you believe. If ever we needed an Easter resurrection reality of Jesus drawing near and walking with us, it is now. On this long and winding road that all of humanity is slowly walking in these recent weeks, Jesus still draws near into the confusion and the chaos of our journey. Jesus draws near. Jesus, who by his Spirit hovered over the chaos before creation, and out of that chaos created, as Genesis records, Jesus still draws near in the midst of our chaos and confusion. Into the unexpected turns of dashed hopes and deep despair. Jesus, the source of a hope that does not disappoint, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Spirit whom he has given us. Jesus draws near again today. And even as the darkness was about to descend on the two on the road to Emmaus, and now even as a sense of darkness would seem to descend, again Jesus not only draws near, he stays near. With his enlightening presence, Jesus, the light of the world, draws near, transforming the darkness as we walk this long and winding road as followers of the risen Jesus. If ever, if ever we needed an Easter moment of Jesus drawing near, we need it now. So as we walk along, and as we talk along, the journey of these days, hear the reminder from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. We must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. Let us anticipate his question, his invitation as we walk and as we talk to share with him what we are talking about, our questions, our confusion, our dashed hopes, and open ourselves to his spirit and his word to trace his finger through the journey of eternity to this very moment and to each one of us with his redeeming love. Wherever you are in life, in life as a journey, as General Osborne penned, Easter and the reality of the resurrection of Jesus meets you there today. Jesus was not only crucified and died for you and I, but he rose victorious over death and darkness that our life's journey might have an eternal destination with him, and that he has risen, and our life's journey is to be accompanied by him. Jesus is drawing near to you today. Anticipate, be ready to allow yourself to be interrupted by him. In closing, hear these further words from General Osborne's song, 
Life is a journey and long is the road. And the second verse he outlines, life is a seeking, life is a quest. And then here, these words of the third verse, life is a finding, vain wanderings cease, when from the Savior we claim all we have longed for, solace and peace. All we have life in his name. Life in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ, who still draws near. He is drawing near to you today. God bless you this Easter 2020. Allow me to share these words penned by retired officer Major Shirley Pavey. And I love her writing. And this poem is entitled, If. If. I was just thinking, Lord, what a difference it would make in our lives, our homes, our jobs, our day-to-day -day counters. If. We possessed an acute awareness of your living presence in our points of conflict, life's mundane details, the attitudes of our mind and spirit, the whole business of living. If. Suddenly the whole of life's horizon in the now and that far distant we was clouded over by the divine shadow of your living spirit at liberty in all our circumstances. If. In our every resounding footsteps on the pavement of our earthly habitation, our sensitive inner spirit ear grasps the step of the divine, walking in close harmony beside. If every meal partaken of was a sacred breaking of bread with the divine unseen guest. If every deed, every conversation, every action and reaction every thought possessed the impulse of his awareness. If this is not the way it is, shouldn't it be? If this is not so, then we have missed the vital truth of Easter.
Thank you for joining us today here at Territorial Headquarters for this Easter Sunday celebration. May the hope and the glory of our risen Lord be with you today. Now allow me to pray a prayer of benediction upon you. May the loving power of God which raised Jesus to new life strengthen you in hope, enrich you with his love, and fill you with joy in the faith today and forevermore. God bless you. Happy Easter.